It was a cold November day in 2011 when Julia Biryukova arrived back to her car that had run out of gas. Much to her shock, her two-year-old son, who she left strapped into his car seat, was gone. Authorities were notified of Sky Metalwala's disappearance, but holes appeared in Julia's story within days. None of it made sense, and she soon withdrew, lawyering up and distancing herself from the investigation. Sky's father was doing his best to find his young son. Over 10 years have passed, and we still do not know what became of two-year-old Sky and whether Julia holds the answer. Sky Metalwala was born to immigrant parents on September 6, 2009. His father, Solomon Metalwala, was born in Pakistan, and his mother, Julia Biryokova, was born in Ukraine. The pair met in 1997. Julia was 15 years old. She had been in the United States for three years at that point. Solomon was 21 years old and invited Julia to a party. They began dating soon after. Julia ended up working at a restaurant owned by the Metalwalas in Pioneer Square, Seattle. In 1999, Julia and Solomon bought their first condo in Bellevue. There was tension between Julia and Solomon from early on in their relationship. They were in love, but also found themselves getting into frequent arguments, sometimes even in public. Regardless, they married in 2003 with a brief ceremony. Unfortunately, their marriage was not an easy one. Julia had a strained relationship with her in-laws and money troubles, further adding to their worries. In 2007, the couple welcomed their first child, a daughter they named Miley. In 2008, their financial issues only got worse when the world went into a recession. Despite this, they purchased a home that cost over $800,000. They now had two mortgage payments to cover in an unstable market. The couple's second child, Skye, was born in 2009. By this time, their house and condo were facing foreclosure. During this time, Solomon claimed Julia began exhibiting signs of psychological issues. She needed the home to be sparklingly clean at all times, making Solomon eat outside and sleep on the floor. Again, this was according to Solomon. Julia claimed that Solomon became volatile and more controlling. When he was just two months old, his parents left Sky alone in the car for almost an hour. This was on a day when it was below freezing outside. This resulted in both Julia and Solomon being arrested for reckless endangerment. They claimed that they had only left him for 20 minutes, not wanting to disturb their sleeping baby. CCTV disproved this. Thankfully for them, the charges were dropped when they agreed to take parenting classes. Julia's mental health continued to decline, and in early 2010, on her 29th birthday, she started the first of three brief stays at a mental hospital. Here, she was diagnosed with severe OCD. Her hospitalization came after she told Solomon of a dream she had of killing the children. Not long after Julia was released, Solomon filed for divorce. It was messy, to say the least. Julia went into the hospital for a second time after she messaged Solomon saying she was suicidal. Following that release, Julia would go in for a final stay. While inside, the official foreclosure was signed on their condo, which meant Solomon had to move out with the children into his parents' home. In their back and forths, Julia alleged Solomon was abusive and feared for her life. Solomon said this was untrue and that Julia was mentally unstable. Custody was obviously also a major issue between the two. Someone had put a claim to Child Protective Services that Solomon injured his daughter. While this was later found to be untruthful, he was unable to see his children for a whole year while the allegation was being investigated. Julia ended up being awarded full custody of the children in September 2010. 
Solomon had no legal visitation rights, and Julia refused to let him see the children. When she wanted to move to Arizona with the children, offering to drop any alimony or child support due to her, Solomon refused. He continued to fight this in court. The pair went back and forth for over 12 months until they reached some sort of agreement after court-ordered mediation. Julia would keep custody of the children, but Solomon would have full visitation rights. Unfortunately, this didn't last, and on November 3rd, 2011, Julia spoke to her lawyer about feeling pressured into the agreement. Three days later, Sky would vanish. The following version of events are according to Julia. On the morning of November 6th, Sky woke up feeling under the weather. When Julia discovered this, she decided to take him to the Overlake Medical Center. She put Sky and his sister into the car, a silver 1998 two-door Acura Integra, and left the apartment. Then, Julia said that the car ran out of gas along the Washington State Route 520 Expressway. Julia pulled over onto the side of the road and left Sky strapped into the car seat, taking Miley to find some help. She walked for roughly an hour before reaching the closest gas station a mile from the car. Julia didn't buy any gas, though. Instead, she called a friend on a payphone. This friend arrived at the gas station and picked Julia and Miley up. When they arrived back at the car, Sky was gone. Julia then phoned authorities and reported him missing. She didn't call Solomon himself, instead allowing police to notify him of what had happened. A search was launched immediately, and 20 block radius of where Sky was allegedly last seen was scoured. It didn't take long for the Bellevue police officers to start questioning Julia's story. Remember how Julia had said her car ran out of gas? Well, that wasn't true. Her car was tested and found to be operating as normal with enough gas in the tank. She also left her phone and wallet at home, despite claiming to be heading for the hospital. In the hour after she left Skye in the vehicle, Julia did little to try and get help. Naturally, investigators questioned Julia about these issues with her story. Instead of trying to explain further, Julia stopped cooperating and refused to take a lie detector test. The fact that both Solomon and Julia had formally been arrested for leaving Skye unattended in a vehicle caught the investigator's attention. Could Julia have actually left Skye strapped into his car seat that day? Multiple vehicles had driven past the Silver Acura that day and noted not seeing a child in the car. You'd think this would stand out to anyone passing had a child been inside, but Miley said that Skye was in the car that morning. When questioning neighbors of Julia, none of them had seen Sky for the last two weeks. They also remarked that Julia and the children hardly left the apartment. The investigators publicly stated they didn't believe Julia's version of events. She was not arrested for child endangerment due to investigators not wanting to miss the opportunity for prosecution further down the line. To put it simply, to convict Julia of child endangerment, they would have to prove the sky was in the car that day. Should they then find evidence that points elsewhere, the two would contradict. ABC News reached out to Julia by email, using an email address that her relative said she used. In the response, Julia said her lawyer had instructed her not to discuss the case. She also called Solomon a sadistic Muslim Pakistani. It is important to note that the email has not been confirmed to be sent by Julia. Miley was taken from Julia by the Washington State Department of Social and Health Services and placed into foster care following Skye's disappearance. Solomon was initially given two visits per week and later awarded custody. Four years went by with little movement in the case. It was far from cold, but without Julia's cooperation, authorities had little to go on. In 2015, Bellevue had a new police chief appointed, Steve Milet. He released a statement in a local paper, appealing for Julia to talk with them. 
age-progressed images of Skye were also distributed. By this time, Julia had somewhat moved on with her life. She married a man named Alan Morgan and had a third child. Social services knew this and were concerned about this baby being in the home with Julia and her husband. Alan was a convicted felon who previously had a child taken from his home. Julia's mental health was questioned after a complaint from the doctor who delivered her baby. The two had a tumultuous relationship with assault allegations and no contact orders. Despite this, Julia still visited Alan while he was in jail. Two years later, 2021 or 2019, Julia was arrested after she shoplifted. Still, she wouldn't discuss Skye's case with the police. Many theories have popped up over the years. No trace of Skye was ever found in the area surrounding where he supposedly was last seen. It isn't hard to see why many think Julia is not telling the full truth about what happened that day. No one had seen Skye in two weeks, and Miley saying her brother was in the car that morning could be explained away by Julia telling her what to say. She was just four years old, after all. Solomon has previously speculated that Skye was possibly taken to Ukraine by Julia's estranged father, who visited the US in the spring of 2011. He has said that this is unlikely, though. With Julia Briokova still not talking, it is doubtful that we will ever know what truly happened to Skye Metalwala. If he is out there, maybe Skye will discover his identity and come forward one day. Miley lives safely with her father, who describes her as smart and adventurous.